This is part two of the video presentation on Han Feitza. As for Han Feitza himself, he is clearly a realist, but he is also a legalist who emphasizes the importance of the place of law. The two features are presented in an interesting way in chapter 43, which is entitled in our RCCP text as Deciding Between Two Models of Government. In this chapter, Han Feitza teaches that an appropriate philosophy of government must embrace the ideas of Shun Buhai and Gong Sun Yang. Here is what he says on page 355. A questioner asks, Shun Buhai and Gong Sun Yang, which of these two men's teachings are most vital to the success of the state? In response, I say, this cannot be determined. If people do not eat, then in 10 days they will die. But in the depth of winter, if they do not clothe themselves, they will also die. So if you ask which is more vital to the success of human beings, food or clothing, it is clear that people cannot do without either one of them. Both are, tool, both are tools necessary for sustaining life. Now, Shan Buhai discussed the use of administrative methods, while Gong Sun Yang advocated governing through laws. Using administrative methods means to assign offices based on a person's qualifications, to heed the objectives named in a minister's proposal, and then hold them accountable for the actual results, to manipulate the handles of life and death, and to test the abilities of the assembled ministers. This is what the ruler controls. Government through laws exists when the ruler's edicts and decrees are promulgated among the various departments and bureaus, when the certitude of punishments and penalties is understood in the hearts of people, when rewards are given to those who respect the law, and when penalties are imposed on those who violate the ruler's decrees. This is, what in, this is what instructs the ministers. If the ruler has no method, he will be obscured above. If the ruler has no laws, there will be disorder below. A state cannot do without either one of these things. Both are the tools of emperors and kings. These two figures and their forms of thought are presented in the important figure section of the RCCP text. Han Feitza presents Shun Buhai from his home state of Han, Fe of Han first, and so will we. He will be followed by Gong Sun Yang. Shun Buhai, this is from the RCCP. Shun Buhai, Prime Minister of the state of Han under the Marquis Jia uh, Jiao of Han. And his years are approximately 358 to 333 BCE. And an important figure within the Fajia legalist school. Shambuhai is credited with developing the idea of administrative methods. An elegant, though somewhat inflexible system for evaluating the performance of government officials by comparing the objectives or duties that ministers name for themselves when they propose an action or accept a government position with the actual form or situation that results when they carry out those duties. The, if form and name match, the minister has properly performed his duties and should be rewarded. If they do not match, the minister has failed in his duties and should be punished. This idea directly influenced the thought of Han Feitza. Gong Sun Yang, also known as Xiang Yang or Lord Xiang, he was the chief minister of Duke Xiaoqin. And his years are approximately 361 to 338 BCE. And the purported author of the Book of Lord Xiang an important work of Fajia, the legalist school. Gong Sun Yang is credited with developing the notion of government through laws or legal standards in which a ruler clearly defined and easily, uh, 
the ruler establishes clearly defined and easily understood standards of duty and behavior for his subjects and then motivates his people to accord with them through the use of rewards and punishments. The idea directly influenced Han, the thought of Han Feitza. Notice that for both of these two founding figures of legalism, the emphasis is, is actually on fa, which is usually translated as law. Law, however, is just not a broad enough concept for what these two legalists have in mind. Here's what the important historian of Chinese thought, Benjamin Schwartz, says about the concept. The Western term legalism has become the conventional translation of the Chinese Fajia, school of Fa, and I shall continue to use it despite its misleading connotations. The idea of Fa is fully elaborated, though, through both Shen Buhai's administrative methods and Gong Sun Yang's governing through laws. Schwartz says that for Han Feitza, Lord Shang, that is Gong Sun Yang, is preeminently the theorist of Fa. When Shen Buhai is the, and while Shen Buhai is the theorist of Shu, bureaucratic method or technique. The central feature of Lord Shang's Fa program is the penal law. Shen Buhai's program of Shu, on the other hand, constitutes a complete theory of bureaucracy and organization. Legalism then incorporates the rules of ordinary conduct and specifies a penalty for the violation of those rules, and it also prescribes a set of organizing rules and procedures and that facilitate managerial organization. Han Feitza embraces Lord Shang's emphasis on Fa as the penal law. The gateway to good political order is having clearly established laws and associated penalties. The law is a prescriptive and negative incentive. It is much different than what we have seen in the Confucians. For them, conduct was to be self-regulated by an inculcated set of dispositions, the virtues. The law and its enforcement mechanism involves the application of force. The difference between the two is pointed at to by Schwartz, who distinguishes a sharply drawn antithesis between a society based primarily on spiritual moral cement of Li and a society primarily based primarily on the sanctions of force. The legalists generally are very suspicious of trying to obtain social um, order by getting people to be good. Han Feitza says on 357 of the RCCP text, when a sage governs a state, he does not wait for people to be good in deference to him. Instead, he creates a, a situation in which people find it impossible to do wrong. If you wait for people to be good, in deference to you, you will find that there are no more than 10 people, 10 good people within the borders of your state. But if you create a situation in which people find it impossible to do wrong, the entire state can be brought into compliance. In governing, one must use what is numerous and abandon what is scarce. Therefore, the sage does not work on his virtue, he works on his laws. There is also a positive incentive. Desirable conduct is to be rewarded. Han Feitza refers in chapter 10 to punishments and rewards as the two handles. In this chapter, Han Feitza teaches that the two handles are the mechanism by which a ruler maintains his power over his ministers. It is clear, however, that the two handles are to be used more broadly in society not just over the, the ministers, that is. The main idea here is that given a narrow view of human nature in which people are most strongly motivated by pleasures and pains, society can be made well-ordered with the rational application of law. No large state can be well-governed when the ruler manages everything by himself. Han Feitz addresses this idea in chapter 6 on page 
321 of our text. He says, now if the ruler of men tries to personally examine each of the hundred offices, he will find that his days are too short and his strength is insufficient. The sage kings knew of this insufficiency. So they put aside their own abilities and based their government on law and method. With this arrangement, the various subordinates of the court kept to their places and remained unassuming, not, dar not daring to overstep the boundaries of their offices or infringe upon each other's duties. What we have here in Han Feitza's teaching, what we have here is Han Feitza teaching us that sage kings established the bureaucratic state in which the various offices under the leadership of a minister who in turn falls under the jurisdiction of the ruler, focus on a specialized task. Thus, says Han Feitze, the affairs of government were not enough to exhaust the strength of the former kings, and they had more than enough time to get things done. According to Harley Creel, China invented state bureaucracy and passed it on to the rest of the world. Hanfeitz envisioned the state apparatus that was virtually self-replicating. The bureaucratic procedures themselves would be enough to impartially select the next member of a department. He says, The way is the beginning of the 10,000 things and the guiding thread of truth and falsity. For this reason, an enlightened ruler holds to the beginning so that he may know the source of the 10,000 things and regulates the guiding thread so that he may understand the starting points of excellence and failure. Thus empty and still he waits, allowing names to define themselves and affairs to, de to determine themselves. Being empty grasps the essence of phenomena. Being still, he understands the correctness of movements. When a proposal is made, it itself serves to name the objectives. When an affair is carried out, it itself serves to form the results. When form and name are matched and found to be identical, there is nothing for the ruler to do, and everything returns to what is essential. And again, he says in chapter 6, found on page 319 of our text, Thus, an enlightened ruler uses the law to select men and does not try to promote them himself. He uses the law to evaluate accomplishments and does not try to measure them, them himself. When ability cannot be hidden and errors cannot be covered up, when those who only have a good reputation cannot advance and denunciations cannot make good men retire, then the relationship between ruler and minister will be clearly defined and the state will be easy to govern. Thus, if your majesty would only attend to the law, everything would be fine. The apparatus of state then becomes self-propagating and its operation is geared, thinks Han Feitze, to the expectation that most rulers are going to be neither especially good nor bad but mediocre and these are the operations of bureaucracy as found in Han Feitze on page 358 of the RCCP text he says now those above encourage the people to plow the, their fields and cultivate new land because they want to increase the people's means of livelihood but the people think that their superiors are just being cruel. They draw penal codes and establish heavy penalties in order to put an end to wickedness. But the people think that the, the superiors are just being harsh. They levy taxes in money and grain in order to fill the coffers and granaries of the state so that they can found so that they can fund military expeditions and rescue the people in times of famine. But the people think their superiors are just being greedy. They ensure that everyone in the state knows how to put on armor and see.